I'm Christian. I'm Tragula. And this is the Total Perspective Vortex. Today is June 9th, 2020, and it's the second week of the 2020 collapse riots. Um, 2020 collapse? Yeah, I'm calling it the collapse because I think that's probably the, the best description of it. I've been thinking about like... Eight, uh, what else to call it? Uh, is, is it a protest? Is it is it riots? And is it peaceful protesters as they repeat ad nauseum? They bleat ad nauseum on uh, in the media right now. So, why do you like another, that? another cop was set on fire and <laughs> right. a, a horse was stoned to death in another day of yeah, peaceful, peaceful, an otherwise yeah. peaceful <laughs> protest. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, so why why have you landed on on the collapse? Like, what's your what's your reasoning around that? Because it's it's a it's a it's an attempt at a controlled collapse, and uh, people are gonna. I can hear people screeching conspiracy theorist and that now, and it and I think like if the last test podcast, uh, we talked a bit about how much of this is conscious is unconscious, like there is there is a conscious will to bring down capitalism in the West, but there's also an unconscious desire to do that as well, uh, to, to, to tear down meritocracy. And it, it's, it can be difficult to see where the, uh, the, the conscious ends and the un, unconscious uh, willing things into existence is, uh, begins. And that's a, a big part of the problem. We talked a bit about that uh, yesterday, last time we were recording right. and uh, we in that I compared uh, the setup of this collapse and it's it's largely like by organizations like Antifa and, and the Dems they're trying for a, a a controlled collapse or directed collapse that's going to work in their favor but if you start this this collapse of a complex system it that's not it's not necessarily going to turn out that way right like if you you can cut down a tree and in a certain, for, uh, and to a certain de degree, you can direct where the tree is going to fall if you're very careful about how you, you cut down the tree. Right. But there's no guarantees. The wind could come up in, a, in an inopportune time. You could be distracted. You could be careless. You, you, don't, you might not cut down trees or take down Western civilization every day of the week and you may not your intuitions of how the system will react may not be what you expect and you could end up having the, the tree fall on you and that's still a, a very likely up in the air outcome in this case so there there are forces there are numerous parties in play that are trying to that want the collapse to occur and they're trying to direct it in their own their own interest and towards their own ends but to the degree they'll be successful in that there's a there's a large question or if the collapse will actually occur at all or, and to what degree right this is a, again a complex structure when it collapses it can collapse entirely or it can collapse partially right uh you know a tree could collapse into another tree and then there they end up sort of the other tree ends up supporting it uh if a house a part, part of the house could collapse and a part of the structure could remain up so there's lots of scenarios where, uh, you know, this collapse does not go as planned or this uh, collapse goes in a direction that no one expects. But that's the goal. The goal here is to tear things down and not build things up. Now, just to so, bring the other, the previous well, conversation. I, I did, yeah, just before, before we get into the other conversation, uh, just so that uh, I, there is like a, a tinfoil hat aspect to kind of the way that you're saying when, when we use the word kind of they, you know, the conceptual they are. Uh, um, so do you want to clarify which parties you think are involved? I could use we just as easily in that. Um, okay, what does that mean? Well, there are, I think there are lots of people who are willing this collapse that are um, not part of any organization. And that's a key component of why the cultivation of character is is so critical uh, because it like uh, I've I've mentioned before and I get this from Jordan Peterson and he's absolutely right is 
that a maligned or pathological society is the summation of maligned or pathological individuals. Okay. And if we, part of the, the demoralization process that's gone on is that people uh, not only uh, not only don't know how to interact in the system anymore but on an individual level, but they they have a desire to see everything collapse. And in, and I'm sure uh, if the listeners and you, Christian and my myself, if we're honest to ourselves, like you, you can that darker part of our personality wants to see the world burn, right? Like if you look at the movie Fight Club or something, there's a wish for wish for a moment. There's a wish to see the game board flipped and reset into what we think part of us desires is a simpler time or at least more chaos because maybe we can we can uh, climb the ladder uh, when when chaos is unleashed interesting yeah so there's a there's okay. there's two you know there's there's a a will to build and create but there's also a, a will to destroy and it's built in into us like that in, into our system and you can sort of see it from a game theory perspective that especially people on the bottom or people who are being uh, in, engaging in a game, it's logical that there would be a part of our consciousness that is watching for things. And, and this is, these are cues that they, they build in, right? Like, so, so the people talk about how, how unfair the system is because unfairness is one of the triggers that will cause people to, uh, uh, cause cause people to uh, resent or question the social game that we're currently engaged in. So if, right. if people think that the game is stacked against them or rigged against them, that will trigger their resentment emotion and their uh, desire to flip the game board. And that's what they're when they're talking about taking down capitalism or the Western civilization. There's this desire to flip the game board. So hopefully. It, um, I cut you. You come up on top now. Tim Pool talks about when he was at uh, Occupy. Occupy. He Wall talked Street. to some of the Occupy Wall Street. Uh, he talked to some of the uh, or, the organizers, the Antifa types, and he and, and Tim. I, I don't know where he got this, but he just he described how if you flip a pyramid like a pile of sand you end up still with another pyramid or another pile of sand. It just, just, all that changes is who's at the top. Right. Right. And that's, and, and the, they would readily agree with that because a lot of this, this will to flip the system and what you, with these communists don't, uh, don't articulate clearly is because uh, it's so ugly is that they're just determined to, to, they, they see in the future that they'll be the ones at the top and they'll be the ones that are directing things and they'll be the ones who can get society right. At a minimum, you know, depending on, on the, their character and how much they're deluding themselves, they'll think that they, they are going to get it right for everyone or uh, if, the, if there's a little less self-deception there, they'll just be thinking that I'm going to get it right for myself. Right. Okay. So... Um... So yeah, so last time we talked about uh, kind of individuals' roles and um, how uh, corruption happens over time. And I think we wanted to touch on that a little bit today. Um, did you want to introduce that a little bit? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, I, so last time we were talking about who's to blame for the fire. And I... Like, like who, again, it gets to that question of how much of this is consciously planned and how much of this is con unconsciously willed into being. Like, who are the parties involved? Right. And I, I'd say that, like, and it, well, to the extent this is unconsciously willed into being, and it's a, it's a s system wide complex, I, I'd say that everyone bears a little responsibility. Uh, but because that responsibility is so diluted and, and distributed, no one feels that 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 guilt or called a responsibility for this. Even the people right. most proactively who desire to build this down don't don't have a desire don't feel 
responsible for the collapse or the calamity that's coming about by this. And that's a huge part of the problem and a huge and, and goes to the lack of, of, of good character development. Uh, but to focus on it, so this idea of distributed blame, I talked about the wildfires in Australia and how right. that was a failure and the, the massive wildfires that hit the whole country was a failure in public policy, a fail, failure to maintain institutions that have been established for a hundred years, right? So we had controlled burns and it was the responsibility of individual municipalities to have these controlled, burn, controlled burns that would stop a large massive fire from ever, ever occurring because you'd have these smaller fires during the wet season that you could control and that over time would maintain the entire system. But there would be people who challenged these, into, um, these controlled burns, animal rights activists who challenged, and it would be easier to appease the animal rights activists at the moment who are talking about baby birds and trees and fires that you start compared to um, justifying the established institution that so the key thing about the forest fire, fire analogy is that the massive fire occurred the future. because of all these micro decisions, these small appeasements, these cowardly, uh, these cowardly take the easy road approaches of, of the leaders of these municipalities. So it was very easy for every leader to say, oh, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put off the fire, the burns for another year. And, it'd be, and when the animal rights activists came to another municipality, it was easy for them to say, well, this other municipality gave in, so, so we'll, we'll put off the, the controlled burns are, as well. And the, the, key, the attractiveness of this cowardly approach and why our leaders are being selected for this cowardly approach is that the cause, the response, whenever you take this, this cowardly approach, the responsibility is distributed you're not putting any attention on yourself. So now that we have this massive fire that consumed most of Australia and killed billions of animals, there's no one municipality, no one decision that you can point to and say this was the cause. Whereas if you take a heroic stance, you take responsibility for the, for the situation. You bring it up bring all eyes on to yourself like you're you're holding this, this torch and people see how you react so if they take the opposite and they say no this is the controlled burns are necessary well they have to back up that stance and the forces of not only uh the the activists but also the all the pressure all the responsibility that was slung off by those other municipalities is brought onto them. And that's exactly what we're seeing here too. That every time one of our leaders kneels, one of these leaders starts bleeding out the ideological propaganda of Black Lives Matter, uh, that it becomes harder for the next person to take a heroic stance. Because now they're taking on more responsibility than they would have other, otherwise, and more eyes will be on them. So this is so I, I tied this also to Jordan Peterson and why his principled stance was so uh, uh, so critical. Like all he he he'd had he had to do was acquiesce to using uh, using preferred pronouns under the rule of law, uh, under the force of law. But he his his line his principled stance was there should. There shall not be compelled state a compelled speech in Western little, little, liberal democracies. It's not. It's against the British parliamentary tra tradition to have compelled speech. Right. Right. What is he fam famously? I'm not doing it. I'm that, not doing it. Whole, I'll, I'll go to I'm prison. Not doing it. Yeah, I won't pay the fine. Right. I'll go to prison. And and as an in and as an individual, that seems like a small thing. Yeah. Like you're saying, it just kind of funneled. But. All eyes went on to him because he had taken that heroic stance. Right. And that's the other side of it is that you, you have to be willing to, to back that up and, and bring that responsibility. And this is why cowardice is so appealing is because you, right. sl you slug off the responsibility and 
you the collective pays the cost for you. You don't you don't pay the individual cost disappears. You only risk the individual cost when you take the heroic stance. Right. Well, luckily here in Canada we have a a, a prime minister who's uh, incredibly courageous uh, at every turn. So we're we're lucky in that sense. So what what can so we've had this discussion and but what can we flesh out the idea of like what an individual can do? I think that's where we left off last time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So again, it gets to this idea that a maligned or pathological uh, society is the result of maligned or path pathological individuals. So you gotta sort yourself up, sort yourself out, clean your room. And also find ways to uh, take the heroic stance because uh, that's the, well, and I'm going to be getting into a whole other can of worms then about the nature of being, but this is, there's, I'll, I'll leave it at this. So there's, I, there's three existential fears. I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'm going to talk about the most important one, the one that's overlooked from our society. And I had to create a word for this because I couldn't find find one it's i call it already phobia from right. the greek for virtue or excellence so it's what it is is fear of excellence fear of virtue fear of the heroic path and this good cowardice word. sorry it's a good word it's a useful word it is a useful word and when you think about it this fear of the heroic path is just as prevalent to how you live your life like it's it's something that controls you just as much as your fear of death and in ways you don't you don't imagine so to to get a really good idea of what the fear of the heroic path looks like it's the fear of doing the right thing of acting virtuous when you've identified what you what you should do to be that virtuous person and you 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 slide away from it. So the classic grinding example of this is procrastination. Everyone procrastinates at some time in their life and everyone sees the appeal of procrastination. Right. You, and typically how I experience, and I, I'm going to use my, my theory of mind to project out on the world and assume that people have a similar experience to myself. But let's, let's say like if you're going to go pay bills and you you may know that you should you should do this you have to pay your monthly bills but you'll develop this anxiety about it and you'll put sure. it off and, yeah. and part of that taking the heroic path is that you know that you should do it but you know it's going to be difficult in ways you don't completely understand and jordan peterson talks about the the hydra or the 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 dragon in the hydra right where you're it these these problems sort of unfold and are much more difficult than you than you first expect when looking at them. So there may be things like your computer might not boot up or the site might be down or you're not entirely sure if you have enough money in your bank account or like all these things, all these fears and worries about it come up. And if you don't do anything, if you take the cowardly path, then you don't have to deal with that fear. You may and you're, you you can put it off, but you'll be much better off if you just do it. And then it's done. And you don't have to worry about it. And you can move on and do other other tasks. So you can you can see that the virtuous path is to do this thing and get it done to, to pay your bills right now. Right. You want to change the world, people, pay your bills. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it starts with that. That's why, you know, Jordan Peterson does, was talking right. about cleaning your room. And Jocko Willink talks about the importance of uh, getting up early and exercising every morning. And having right. like having a regular schedule is because that is if if you that is overcoming your retophobia at the beginning of the day, starting your day with a victory, it, even though it's it, it and you know it sounds like an easy win or a trivial win, it's not. If you're doing it every day consistently, that there are very very few people who can achieve that level of discipline. Right. Right. And but. And it makes you much stronger, but that's and that's just one example. And if you achieve that level of discipline, if you overcome your already phobia in that way, there's probably other ways where you're not coming overcoming your erotophobia. 
but this is this is the beginning of it is 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 whether people are taking the heroic patch path or finding identifying uh, the the virtuous path they want to take and being a hero and taking that path or whether they're sliding and, and falling away from that path and right. just as you're not paying your bills because of like all all the things and all the risk and the response it, the taking on that responsibility sort of feels like it's a trivial thing that you're probably going to end up being forced and grudging to do well our leaders are the leaders we have been selecting for procrastinate in exactly the same way and are being manipulated by erotophobia in exactly the same way when they do, when they give in to those animal rights activists or when they put out their their uh their letter of of surrender to black lives matter their their, their proclamation of of uh of i don't even know how to describe it i just the word <laughs> the words leave me but you know what i'm talking about these these in black instagram messages and so forth and like these these trivial uh ideological loyalty signaling gestures uh yeah, the surrender, the surrender documents. Um, the it, it's it's the erratic phobia. It's the it's the taking the cowardly path, the easy road, because you don't have to bring any of the responsibility onto yourself. Then the risk is is collectively distributed, right? Right, and you don't have to worry about any individual responsibility. And that is erratic phobia is a big part of, of the appeal of communism. Interesting. Okay. So I think we touched on what we wanted to touch on today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually I'll just, I'll wrap that up. Cause I did, I, I, I talked about that fear thing, but I, I didn't make it concrete. Cause I think there's also, I, I don't think unless you're very, uh, cause I want to put a qualifier on the other side. I, I don't think unless you're a, a very heroic individual who has the room well sorted, as, as Jordan Peterson would say, uh, that you know we should be going out in the street and shouting "All Lives Matter" uh, <laughs> and like having like counter protests at this time. Uh, but there are there are individual acts of heroism that you can do. That uh, so yeah, so st- like one start start putting your own life together and maybe in further podcasts, we'll talk about a bit more about how you can do that. Uh, and I think like a big part of it, and this is something you should identify is don't be afraid to say the truth and say what you ask, actually think. So be careful with your words and, but, but speak the truth. Don't allow people to lie and don't allow yourself to be pulled into their delusion because it's it's easy. Don't allow them to compel your speech. So okay. if, if if it may be easy for you to um it, it may be come up a situation where they're gonna ask you to kneel or it'll see e- seem easy at the time just to say black lives matter to avoid a confrontation but if that's a lie don't let yourself be compelled into a lie don't let yourself be forced into compelled speech uh, that's a line that you should keep just like jordan peterson did okay i think that's a good place to to put a pin in it and and, and maybe come back to some of these topics tomorrow so uh Thank you, uh, Dragula, and uh, this has been the Total Perspective Vortex. Thanks, Christian. Cheers.